I enter the path of male experience. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings Players Championship Research, stats, course preview, some picks to go along with it. It's the second show of Super Players Week, the player-by-player player individual profiles with Joe Idone is already out on the podcast feed and up on Mayo Media Network, sub to both, by the way, and there could be 500 bucks in it for you too, cold, hard, Cash, if you leave a rating and review on Spotify or Apple, five stars, something you enjoy about this show, along with subscribing to it, then, folks, you are in the draw for $500. It's super easy to do. I'm going to be sending out updates through the newsletter as the week goes along once new information is available. If you subscribe to the newsletter completely free right now, down in the description, or just Google Mayo Media Substack and subscribe to it. Then you have more ballots in the draw for that $500. It's completely free to do. It takes less than three seconds. So come on, sub to the newsletter right now. Thanks a lot for that. And the listeners league, 5,000 spots this week. $15 to play. Three max entry. $75,000 of rake-free guaranteed money on DraftKings. Let's fill this up. At the Masters, we might get 7,500 spots if we can fill this all up. We'll have bets on Monday. The best bets on Tuesday with Cam and Rob. We got Cust and Jeff on Monday. Then Tambo and myself, DraftKings picks, the weather, everything of the sorts going down on Wednesday. Might even take your questions. Probably not, but may even take your questions. But I highly recommend that you smash the like to the episode. And another way to get into the $500 draw, easy. Just go down, sub to Mayo Media Network. Easy stuff. Easy stuff all around. So what do you need to know about the Players' Championship? Well, it is... Well, it used to be the fifth major, but now everything's an elevated event. It's the same field that we've been seeing for the past month, these elevated events. It's worth $5 million more. That's nice, I guess. I don't know why that's really all that different than Bay Hill at this point, but... You'll be wanting to hit a top five this week in the one and done if you want to keep pace with the amount of money that's in this prize pool. 144 players in the field. All of the top players are here, except for Tiger Woods. He is not playing and not sure about Maverick McNeely as of yet. There's going to be no Daniel Berger, and we're waiting to see with Byun Han An, who withdrew from the Arnold Palmer Invitational with a wrist injury. We'll see how that ends up going for him. Other than that, unless you're on the Live Tour, you are going to be in Jacksonville at TPC Sawgrass. There is water everywhere on this course. The chalk normally busts on DraftKings. Uh, You'll be able to check out my article on DKNation.com where I go through the last two years of the most popular plays by the field. And it's been a bloodbath for everyone who was popular going into the week. So the best strategy I can tell you to employ is, A, wait for the weather reports to come out. I am using the windfinder.com at... What's this called? Ponte Verde Beach slash Viano is the one that's closest to the course. It looks like there's a ton of wind on Saturday into Sunday morning. But that's what it said when I did the show last week for Arnold Palmer Invitational. And then that moved into late Thursday and early Friday, which really affects how you would probably set up your DraftKings roster and even make your bets at the same time. So don't commit too much too early. I know there's a million dollars up for grabs on DraftKings. Some of the odds you're going to see this week are going to be very juicy. There's going to be a ton of boosts around. But you got until Tuesday or Thursday morning at 6 a.m. Eastern in order to get your bets in. You don't need to make them all on Monday, the moment they get updated from where they are on the weekend. Because they're all pretty stale right now. Guys are only moving up. No one's moving down. We'll see guys move back down who had previously been up on the odds board based on what happened at API. So expect guys like, I don't know, Shane Lowry to fall from like 40 to 1 to 80 to 1 all of a sudden. He might not get that low. But that's an example of a guy, Tom Kim, from 50 to 1 to 65 to 1. Those sorts of things are where I want to squeeze the value out because a guy had a one bad week. Who cares? It was t- t- tough conditions, a super long course. There's water everywhere. Course history here really makes very little difference. Uh, we've seen terrible course history end up winning. Guys with great ho- course history shoot 80 in the first round. It all depends on the wave that you're in. And if you can keep the ball out of the water, the courses that I'm looking for the most in terms of crossover especially from the sleeper range in terms of trying to find guys for the top 20 guys in the $6,000 range on DraftKings. The Wyndham championship just has an extreme amount of crossover with TPC Sawgrass. I almost said Scottsdale. Maybe it does for Scottsdale too. Who knows? I probably have to look into that, but Stenson's won them both. Webb Simpson's won them both. See, Kim has won 
both of those events. Sergio has won both those events. Davis Love has won both those events. Uh, you know, they're fast, Bermuda, green, similar part of the country, both not very long courses, more of an emphasis on driving accuracy over driving distance. So a lot of commonality between the two courses. If you want to do, if it's a Pete Dye course, you can just look at any Pete Dye course, and whether it be Heritage, uh, American Express, at the stadium course itself. River Highlands doesn't really translate all that well, but when you see these short Bermuda, or hell, even just short courses, Cologne is another one that you can probably get to. The Sony Open is another that you can get to where they all have similar traits. We've seen similar players win at both of them. Like Siwoo just won the Sony. He's one of the players. Justin Thomas has won at Short Honda. He's won at Short Sony. He's won at the Players' Championship. Cam Smith won at Sony. Cam Smith won at the Players' Championship. So I would just be looking at a lot of these shorter courses uh, when I'm either going to put a lot on someone near the top end or even someone in the mid-range or long shots. That will be more of a tiebreaker and a lean towards me because the top end's the top end. Like, if you're going to have to choose between one of Scheffler, Rahm, and Rory, more than likely. Who am I to tell you who's going to be better? Probably Rory. He's had the most success here, but hey, I said that doesn't matter, right? So it's probably Rahm. Oh, wait, it's probably Scheffler. Just flip a three-way coin. Roll a three-sided dice to figure out who you want to get at the top. Like, that's what you're doing. You're flipping coins between a lot of similar names. It's the rest of the field that we're trying to figure out. And Tambo will have a lot of excellent lineup strategy on Wednesday, so please don't miss that. You're plenty familiar with TPC Sawgrass as of now, obviously. But let's take a look at it. It is in Florida. It is pure Bermuda grass. Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass greens. That's always fun. Overseeded with Poet Trivials. Uh, very similar to what we saw because at this time of the year, everything is not you know, completely in bloom from what we've seen. So there has been some putting crossover. Many have said, many have said with TPC Scottsdale, that would be the one thing. Webb has won at both those venues in the past as well. It's par 72, 7,189 yards, so sub 7,200. Water everywhere on this course. The par 3 is the average driving distance, or the average distance is 180 and a half yards, but three of the four are actually shorter than that, but all four played over par last year, with the shortest, the 137-yard number 17, and the longest, the 237-yard par 3, uh, were amongst the top six toughest holes. Last year is going to be very difficult to figure out because, you know, we thought we nailed the wins splits and we did we picked when the wind was going to come forgot that sometimes they delay stuff then all of our guys ended up playing in the crap weather and the wave that everyone considered bad ended up the good wave and ended up rocking out with your cock out if you had that ss am pm i believe it was stack you probably got six to six and you probably did pretty damn well so to stack and double sides is probably where you want to go this week or play like a four two blend something like that uh, all four let's see par fours 10 of them on the course of par four scoring obviously is going to make a big difference the average distance on those 430 yards they're not really long there's three of them under 400 yards there's three of them over 470 but generally speaking those are pretty short for 10 par fours on a course uh, each of the last three par fours on the course ranked amongst the seven toughest on the course last season holes 14 15 and 18 the average distance on the par fives 549 yards with the two shortest being the two easiest holes on the course all four of them had a birdie or better rate north of 30 percent and two of those short ones clearing 40 percent with a sub nine percent bogey rate but we've seen the bear trap the, the the horrible horseshoe is coming up the green mile uh i forgot what the one the snake pit at valispar is coming up we might need to come up with a name for holes 11 to 16 i know those are very random holes at tpc sawgrass but for us in the fantasy community it's probably what you want over that stretch three of the four easiest holes pop up and there's really only tr one true difficult hole now last year 14 and 15 played really difficult that's not listen 15 can it has a high birdie rate can have a high bogey rate if it picks up but just take a look at the past winners cam smith was minus eight on those holes with a pair of birdie streaks last year is minus five on all the other holes justin thomas was seven under on those holes in 2021 2019 when rory won he was 19 or he was nice 19 under nine under he was seven under on all the other holes webb simpson was 12 under on those holes with a pair of birdie streaks the year that he won in 2018 so it's pretty interesting stuff when you go back and kind of take a look at how this course shakes out in terms of what we're looking at as it pertains to 
trying to get some birdie streaks. Like if you start, uh, you probably want to start on the front uh, in terms of DraftKings showdown this week. Not that it's, you know, anything special just because you start on one versus number nine. But as we hop over to fantasynational.com right now and take a look at the scorecard, again, fantasynational.com slash mayo to get yourself 20% off Right now, you can do all this research yourself. You can generate all your lineups. You can look at the odds, update it in real time. The simulator will become available on Tuesday. You can get, you have your live ownership projections. It's all there. Fantasynational.com slash Mayo. The weekly will cost you seven, eight, seven, eight bucks, something like that. Yeah, there's a million dollars up for grabs on DraftKings this week. You're probably going to want to get fantasynational.com. Okay. Take a look here. Number one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all great and everything. But if you start on number nine, here's the problem. 17, the sixth most difficult hole on the course. Despite the fact that you can birdie, it has a birdie rate of 16%. That's not bad, but you can get it going bad. You get it going very wrong on the island green. That's not really the issue here. The issue here is number 18, a 10% birdie rate, the most difficult hole on the course. So if you're looking to get generate a birdie streak, which is so tantamount to winning in showdown contests on DraftKings, it's just not likely to happen through this stretch. It is far more likely to happen through here. Yes, number eight is the third most difficult hole on the course. That's super long par three. However, number nine is a par five. Very easy. 30% birdie rate. Almost a 1% eagle rate on that hole. Very easy. It's a par five. You want to eat that up. Number 10 tends to be a little bit difficult, but it's average. The birdie rate is a bit down, but it's 15%. So if you can birdie nine, and you can somehow squeeze a birdie out of 10, you're going to be probably streaking through here because it's another par 5, number 11. It is the third easiest hole on the course, a 37% birdie rate, almost a 2% eagle rate. So that is the way that I would be looking through it if I was going to stack guys on the first two days in showdown contests that I would want them starting on hole 1 as opposed to starting on hole 10. Just little differences like that. And listen, if all the best guys are starting on hole number 10, play the best guys. Play the guys that you think are going to score the best but if there's a tiebreaker in play or if you're looking to create some sort of leverage for yourself, starting on hole number one would be where I would be targeting. And there's some pretty big showdown contests this week. Off the tee and around the green, turns out for the top 10 finishers, not really all that relevant. Approach three times as impactful on the top 10 finishers along with putting. We'll see if that changes if we shrink it down to the top five finishers. Oh, and what do we see here? It's about the same. Uh, around the green and off the tee, guys do slightly better inside the top five, but the approach is even better. To look back and just, uh, listen, it's, I'm not telling you anything you don't know that approach play is important uh, at a golf course. Big shocker, right? But it has really bared itself out here to look back at it. Cam Smith gained 6.7 strokes on approach the year he won. These are all the winners. That was fifth in the field. Thomas, 6.5. That was fifth in the field. Rory, plus 6.5, sixth in the field. Webb Simpson lost strokes on approach. He gained everything on and around the greens and ran away with it. He was 92nd in the field in approach. Other than that, Siwoo was 16th. Day was 9th. Fowler was 3rd. Keimer was 4th. Tiger was 2nd. Kuchar was fifth. So if the when you can identify someone, we saw this the year that Si Wu won. Dude couldn't make a putt to save his life. And bad putters have done really well at Sawgrass historically. They tend to be some of the more consistent players. Keegan, Connors, Si Wu, guys that are up and down and don't normally putt all that well. The ball striking can save them at courses like this. And we know that Si Wu is Mr. Pete Dye. He's a second place finish at Heritage. He's won the Wyndham Championship. He's won the American Express. He's won this tournament. He won at one of the other corollaries that I talked about. Oh, well, the Wyndham isn't a Pete Dye course, but Wyndham is a Donald Ross course where he's also played really well, but short Bermuda, Sony Open so far this year. They're just kind of his jam. Jason Day is another one who just used to annihilate Pete Dye courses. We'll get to the Pete Dye filter, but spoiler alert of guys that have played more than like three rounds over the past three years of Pete Dye courses. Shane Lowry is the best in the field on Pete Dye tracks in terms of strokes gain total. So Pat is here to tell you strokes gained approach means a ton. Breaking news. I'm glad you tuned in. It's very good stuff. Uh, you can see you want to be scoring on the par fives, but the par fives are pretty reachable, two of them at least by most of the field, but you can still make your birdies. Uh, number six, I want to say it is. Is it number two? 
now now I can't remember. There's one that just has the water right in front of it. That ever, no, it's number 16. What the hell am I talking about? It's the easiest hole on the course. You can take a rip at it. You can get going in a bad way, but you can still get it up and down for bogey pretty easily. You still probably get it up and down for par pretty easily. Sometimes they tuck that pin in a really weird spot. Not like tucking it back like Buffalo Bill and Silence of the Lambs weird, but there are some precarious spots on the 16th green to, to make the up and down just a little bit more challenging, especially if you see these greens starting to get out of control. The most out of control I can remember was the year that Jason Day won in 2016, and guys didn't. It was like putting on a, a piece of glass. No one knew what to do on them. Everyone was losing strokes, except for like Ken Duke somehow. I think he gained a ton that one day. The historic cut line, it's usually pretty high because there's so many blow-up holes. It was plus three last year. That was the worst weather I've seen at the Players' Championship in some time. So probably a bit of an outlier because it doesn't seem as bad at this moment than we saw last year. But plus one, even, even, plus three, minus one, even, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. So if your guys get in at even at any point during the tournament, it's 144 players. A lot of guys are going to miss the cut, uh, as I'll talk through in a second that uh, you're probably going to be pretty good. If they're at minus one, the cut has never been better or lower than minus one. So if they finish at minus one, you're probably pretty good. Scrambling percentage way down because of all the water that's around. That's just inherently going to be the case with waterlogged courses. Uh, greens and regulation, it's kind of the same thing, although these can be very speedy, hard to get your ball to stick unless you... Unless you can hit the ball really high, because we've seen two types of players do really well here, right? So you have your, like, super apex ball flight guys when the conditions are down, and they can get the ball to stop. Then you have, like, your really good wind players, and the guys who hit it super high are absolutely screwed if the winds pick up. It's kind of a funny juxtaposition at this course, depending on the position. Driving accuracy is up, because you see even see someone like Bryson, who had all the distance in the world the year that Justin Thomas won. He almost won. How do you do it? Basically by taking irons off every tee and making sure he was safe in the fairway. Because it really doesn't matter. There are par fives where that matters to give you a, a better setup on your second shot to generate eagle opportunities. That I will give you. But you can see the field just wants to hit the fairway. That's all you want to be doing here because the holes just aren't that long. It's not that big of a deal to drive it 374 yards on a hole. You're probably going to drive it into the water. If that's going to be the case. So can you get your irons and wedges rolling? Can you hit fairways? Can you make some putts? That's what it's all going to boil down to this week. So I have Fantasy National set right now to the players DraftKings pricing, which is already out. Again, I already went through uh, the top, I think, 40 guys in the field plus sleepers. We're going to try to generate more sleepers right now after we customize the model a little bit. Uh, but you can switch to anything you want. You can, I mean, we're still the Arnold Palmer Gladder, the Arnold Palmer Championship Classic, whatever the hell it's called, the API, Invitational. Still going on right now. You can always just cruise on over, make your, you know, load up the field for actually the third, fourth, third round is not complete yet. So the round four DraftKings pricing will be in there. But if you just want to click on over to DraftKings Sportsbook to see what the odds are for this week. But I'm going to stick on DraftKings pricing because that's how I want to do everything. Last 50 rounds, let's not worry about that so much. Let's shrink it down to past 24 rounds, get more of a recent sample of what's going on to set as our baseline before we go through anything. But in terms of the field, as I mentioned, Tiger is listed in the field. He is not playing. Hideki's dealing with some sort of neck injury. He missed the cut at API. He was Anderker, so that's probably going to end up being a problem for anyone. But... I don't know where the status of his game is at right now. If he played last week, chances are he's probably going to play this week. Although I believe he pulled out of this tournament after lock with a neck injury a year ago. So keep that in the back of your mind. He's $8,400 this week on DraftKings. Benny Ann has a wrist injury. I love Benny Ann coming into both API, and I loved him at the Players' Championship. He's one of those great ball strikers. He's getting that form back. And he can't putt, but he's played really well at this course over the years. So something to keep in mind when you're looking at that. But it's going to be hard to trust him whether he plays or not with a wrist injury. Sam Ryder has been having a few issues, but he was able to gut it through. He missed the cut at API, but he's going to be fine. Maverick McNeely has, in his past two tournaments, Pebble Beach and Phoenix, has withdrawn with a shoulder injury in both those events. He is listed in the field. He is the most mispriced player in the field at $7,800. However... He hasn't played, he hasn't completed a tournament without withdrawing since, let's see here, uh, Farmers. He came 31st. He was 7th at Sony, and it's but it's all been putting. Like, the irons have been horrible. The driving, which he has had stretches of really immaculate driving. 
That's been really bad. Probably because of the shoulder injury. The putting's been absolutely fantastic, but uh, probably not a guy you want to trust whether he plays or not. And yeah, we're not going to see Tiger or Daniel Berger. That's just not happening. I don't know when we're going to... We'll see Tiger at the Masters, probably for the next time he plays, but Berger... Berger hasn't been seen since last year's U.S. Open. He's just, like, drinking his own piss like Morgan Hoffman and chilling in, chilling in hot tubs in Florida. I really have no idea if he's practicing golf, rehabilitating. No clue what's going on with Daniel Berger. I'm just getting that from his Instagram account. So that's basically what you're looking at with the field this week. Uh, some guys will be added. They'll be updated into the system as we go forward. Time to get to the, the modeling, and when I click over, and I have all my custom models saved, and usually, if they're especially good or especially bad, I like to make a few notes next to them. Let's see if we have the Players Championship. Pebble, PGA National, is it under the Players? Is that what we're looking at here? You think I would make this easier on myself? Maybe if I just do a quick Control F to find it here. Players. Oh, the Players. Needs work. Okay. Let's do some work to this. Uh, this has been in full transparency since I hit Martin Keimer to win this tournament. Actually, that's not fair. I hit Siwoo to win uh, in real time once I started looking at his live stats, which is always something you can do on Fantasy National, by the way. If you want to check that out, uh, the feeds are all back updated. You need to be on the tournament in order for it to work, by the way. So if you click on in-tournament stats, now I'm on Arnold Palmer. That tournament is currently going on. I click on in-tournament stats and... You know, some of these guys missed the cut because I clicked on round one. So let's see here. Yeah, we can get a sense of just click on total and you can see what's going on. Oh, Homa, absolutely crushing it in this tournament in terms of approach. He's probably going to win this week. Just just looking at how he does. He's still in 10th. It doesn't even feel like he's having a great week. He's not chipping. He's not putting, which is pretty atypical for someone like Max Homa, where you see that he's actually trailing. Uh, he's actually beating Victor Hovland. And Windy C, Wyndham Clark, who's only gaining on approach this week. So if you wanted to go back in time and check out how guys are doing round by round, you can click on the rounds. You can click on the different stats. That's always a part of the live scoring, as long as you're on the specific tournament in which you're looking for the live scoring. So I have strokes gained approach, weighted at 35%. You think that would be smart, right? Coming into things? We'll see if we can mix that around a little bit. I'm just going to completely blow this up. It needs work. So we have to start over from the beginning and talk through a few things that I just kind of brought up of what we need to do uh, when we were looking at that course breakdown. I, I wish I had strokes gain, don't hit it in the water. Uh, EVR is like the worst guy in the world for that. He loves hitting it into the water. So we will lead with approach. Where are we at? SG approach. Eh, do we want to lead with opportunities gained? Nah, we'll go with approach to start things off. That's one thing that I want to see. Uh, I will throw in opportunities gained as well. I'm going to have more putting stats in this, but we can go back to the course breakdown and kind of take a look at where the buckets are. 200 plus. Hmm. That benefits bombers along iron players really well. That's why we ended up liking Morikawa at this tournament every single year, despite the fact that he doesn't really do anything at this tournament every single year. Being a good wedge player uh, from like 100 to 150, um, if you can kind of combine those two together, you're now upwards of around a quarter of where the shots are going to come from. The distribution is actually quite even, but because of the four par fives and the one long par three, you get almost 30% of your strokes from 200 yards and beyond so maybe we can throw that in it may not be the best bucket to look at especially in a tournament like this but i do i did say you don't want to put it into the water so fairways gained is most definitely somewhere we're going to be looking at where are we at fairways gained okay we'll throw that on the list do we care about driving distance not really so let's throw that one out and we'll go to that bucket of proximity 200 plus. I want to get two putting stats in there as well. I want to get five to 10 feet and 10 to 15 feet uh, where they're going to be converting potentially more of those opportunities than anything else. So let's try that on for size. Do both those putting numbers and throw them in. We're not going to weight them huge. We need to put par four in here somewhere. Once again, if we click back onto the breakdown, 450 to 500 yards, is that the important one? Is that just, those are hard holes. Those are the hardest holes on the course. So obviously you'd want to play them well, or do you want to go into these scoring holes a little bit and see who plays really well in the shorter par fours? Um, and that's something that maybe just pivoting off of that a little bit could give us a little bit more insight. Or maybe instead of waiting one at 10%, we wait, we use both and wait them both at 5%. So let's try that on for size because I'm throwing shit against the wall here when it comes down to it because 
I've just had so little success. The modeling, you know, it needs work. So hopefully this is the work that it needs, the massaging that it needs in order for us to get this done. And let's see here. Where are we? Par fours, 450 to 500. And we'll throw an Eagles gain for good measure just to see how we're doing. And you know what? Should we go birdies or better gained or Eagles gained? Yeah, hell, we'll go Eagles gained. You know what? Birdies or better gained because that actually includes – uh, it's a lot like opportunity, like opportunities gained if people don't know are greens in regulation or greens under regulation from 15 feet and in, which we have identified as a birdie opportunity. Uh, that's why we have both those putting ranges in there as well, that if we can combine someone who gains opportunities are gained by a ton and they putt really well, then, oh, all of a sudden we're doing really well with the guys that we're picking. Birdie or better gain, just, you know, Spieth is going to rate out well because he chips in eight times around and it has nothing to do with his putting or his irons. He's good at chipping. And that's how he generates his birdies. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but that's the difference between those two numbers. So we're going to wait approach at, let's say, 20% because opportunities gained is an approach stat, but we'll wait that at 15%. So instead of 35 for approach, 20 and 15 on approach numbers. We also have proximity in here as well from 200 yards. We'll weight that at 5%. Let's go 5% on that right now. Fairways gain, let's say 10%. And some guys are going to shorten what they do. So like I mentioned Bryson. He really increased his accuracy the year that he decided just, hell, I'm not hitting driver. I can hit a four iron as far as most people can hit driver, but I can hit that straight. I'll just hit that instead. We'll go five and five for the moment for putting. Maybe we can increase that. We'll go five and five for the key par four range is as well. And birdies are better gained. We'll set at 10%. What does that leave us with? Oh, hell, we still got 20% to fuck around with. Let's go. Uh, we'll go five and five more. We'll wait both of the puttings up to 10%. I'm not one who usually overrates putting. But, yeah, you know what? I, I made mention that this has been a ball strikers course, uh, people that are good with iron. So I'm going to use the combined stat of strokes game ball striking, which does include approach again. So instead of jacking up approach to 35%, we'll throw in strokes game ball striking, which combines off the tee and approach. Or hell, you know what? Let's just use tee to green. It's a pretty good metric from what I hear. And we'll put that at 15%, which means we have an extra 5% to throw around on something. And we'll chuck it onto the longer par fours. And that's, we'll, we'll put 67% of the distribution of the par fours on to the longer par fours, 5% on the very short ones. See if our guys can end up using it. So I get to delete needs work off this because I did put work into it. I might have to re-put that note in if this doesn't work this time around, but we shall see what the results tell us for the model on fantasynational.com. Now, I, I just walked you through how I do my model. If you want to do your model, because you might have seen something up on the screen, you're like, oh no, Pat's a legitimate moron. I know way better than him, which is probably true. No qualms about that. If that's how you feel, that's probably accurate. But if you use fantasynational.com slash mail, you save yourself 20% off any membership level, and you can go in and fuck around with it yourself. Makes a ton of sense, right? So let's see. The guys I have started are the guys that I went through on the show with Joe uh, that I ended up really liking. So that's just one way to look at it. Looks like the field got updated here. Uh, my rank, past 24 rounds overall. Homa, baby. Home was the best, then Finau, and obviously this does not include the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Those will update on Sunday evening or Monday morning whenever the ShotLink data gets filtered into the system. Once we receive it from ShotLink, it will go in, and then all of these numbers will update. But as we stand right now, over the past 24, Homa, Finau, Xander, Rom, Cantley, Morikawa, Scheffler, Zawa, Torres, Hollywood, Tom, Hoagie at $7,400, Rory McIlroy, Daniel Berger who is probably not playing. More than like, you know what? He's, let's just say he's not playing. So he's out of there. Sungjae, Tom Kim, Tyrrell Etten, Ricky Fowler, Jason Day, Fowler, Day, Siwoo, one, two, three, all former champions at this event. Then you got Victor Hovland, who, as we speak, is tied for the lead at the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Uh, he was second there the year before. He plays that tournament really well, mind you. Uh, let's see. Chun on you is Kevin Yu. Yeah. That's the ticket. Kevin, you, right? Now I now I have to make sure that's actually him. Let's see. And better known as Kevin, you. You! Shocking. He's actually top 19 in this. Windy C, who, again, we just saw, had a really good approach week at Bay Hill. $7,100. Kirk and Ryder are two. Kirk, $6,300. Pretty good. 
uh, and even to go down, I really like Lowry this week. As you can see with Lowry, we'll do a deeper dive in on him right now and take a look at the uh, – we can put them up on the screen and talk through their individual player profiles. Uh, I mean, I talk them through – with Joe, but you can see Bermuda not his preferred putting surface, but you know what's not his preferred putting surface? Any surface, as it turns out. The tee to green has been amazing. He had a really bad round three at Bale. I think it was like plus eight or something like that. Whatever. I'm not too concerned about that. What I am concerned about is he is averaging five strokes tee to green over his fa past five tournaments, which includes a tournament where he lost five strokes tee to green. That is how good he has been. He was ninth in the field tee to green at Genesis. He was First in the field, tied with Justin Su amongst all of the leaders and coming fifth at Honda, losing strokes, putting along the way, gaining off the tee, gaining on approach, gaining on the greens. And the funny thing is about the Players' Championship, I'm not too concerned about his results, although he has two very good ones, three of the past four starts gaining on the greens, gaining at least three strokes on approach each of the past two years. He's one of the worst putters out there. Uh, basically over the course of the past 10 months, he's forgotten how to putt. But at TPC Sawgrass, he has been very good on these greens. He's been very good around these greens. He's been very good off that he's been very good on approach. And when you take a look at him, he's a former major champion. He is number one, and we get to the Pete Dye filter, on Pete Dye courses, someone who's just very intriguing to go look at. Uh, we take a look at who's been the best at this course, another guy who can't putt to save his life, Keegan Bradley, number one. Over the past five years, Tommy, Adam Scott. Adam Scott is the classic can't putt guy. Although he's a much better putter now. Thomas, he's up and down. Webb Simpson was a good putter until like the past year and a half when he lost. It, basically, someone went back in time, probably Dr. Evil, and stole his mojo. Because I don't know what the fuck happened to him. He got hurt. Now he can't putt anymore. Siwoo, clearly can't putt. Jason Day, very good putter, obviously. Corey Connors, can't putt to save his life. He is also up there. These have been the best seven players at this tournament over the past five years. Then you got my guy, the Gim Reaper. Never finished worse than 29th in two starts. I don't know how that's possible, but that's how we're looking at it right now. Rosie has been good, was not good last year. You Listen, there has to be something instructive about course history, but because of the water and the explosion and the randomness and the wind factors of this course, it's not going to tell you the entire story every single time through. But I do think that really throwing out last year, unless you see similar conditions coming through, which I don't, uh, is just not instructive whatsoever. Like Kisner came fourth last year in a grind fest. He lost in a playoff to Ricky Fowler in 2015 as well. Hasn't really done much in between. And uh, rumors are he might be endercursed this week. But you'll have to tune into Monday's show to find that. I just wanted to go through that and show you who the best players were, the worst players in the field, Piercy, Harris English, which really makes no sense. He is actually having a really good 2020 Players Championship. Uh, Hideki was in the lead. I think Harris English was like a sh stroke or two off after the first round. That was the last time he's actually been here. He had been injured. Uh, you can see he played really well at the Genesis. He made the cut at API. He's someone who, when you take a look at his best results in his career, where have they come at? Well, there's a Pete Dye course he's won at. Uh, the Tournament of Champions. The At Mayakoba, another shorter course. St. Jude, of course, the ton of water. So that's pretty interesting to go through. He's had some good Sony Opens. Another waterlogged course at St. Jude. That was two years ago. So very interesting. Colonial, another short course. He's come second there. Uh, so Harris English is just a, a person that no one is going to play this week. I'm not saying that you should, but he is the type of player that I think you can make a very compelling case for if you wanted to. So the guys that I'm betting, hey, listen, I'm, I'm going to tip my hand. I'm probably going to bet Shane Lowry. I'm definitely going to bet C. Wu, obviously. It's the Players' Championship. He already has a win this year. He's never missed the cut at the Players' Championship. All shaping up for him to be an absolute disaster. Did make the cut at API. Again, had a t all the guys I want to bet this week all had terrible Saturdays at API. But here's what we've seen out of... Mr. Siwoo Kim. I mean, he was zero. He was the net even on around the green last year at the players. Other than that, it was his worst year ever at the players. Actually putts pretty well on these surfaces. And you can see the year that he won and the other year that he top 10 is right around that range of where you want to be in terms of strokes gained approach. He's barely lost off the tee once in his career, gained the other four times. He just has an eye for this sort of course. And maybe we can take a look at both Pete Dye 
and then I'll cobble up the rotation of the courses that I think are the most impactful. Again, something you can do in this search bar on Fantasy National here in the top left uh, and go through the courses that you want to do. I call, I call it the Pete Dye Slam with others uh, that I like to throw into the mix. I don't really feel like River Highlands fits sort of the oeuvre that goes along with what the Players' Championship presents. There's far fewer casualties of water balls. There is on number the drivable number 14 at River Highlands. I love River Highlands. It's a great course, mind you. But it is not uh, one that I want to go to time after time to try to compare all of these ones, especially with the part of the country that it's in, the Northeast. Like, yeah, it doesn't really jibe with what I'm going for. Tom Kim is my pick to win this event. I don't think any first-time players ever won this event, but I just love what I see out of him. Dude can't put on POA, fortunately. This is on Bermuda grass. Uh, he's very good in very windy and very calm conditions uh, and good in difficult rounds. Be he's very mediocre in average rounds, better than average in average difficulty rounds, and he's very good and easy. So if it plays super easy, we're in great shape with Tom Kim. If it plays super hard, we're also in pretty good shape with Tom Kim. But here's what I, here's what I like to see. Now, here's what I don't like to see the struggles off the tee. He had it going for two rounds off the tee. I think he was top 10 in the field at API. But at Genesis, especially, Tom Kim's not the longest guy in the world, shockingly enough. It's not that he's Brennan Todd. That's not what I'm saying when I make that point. What I'm saying is, I mean, I guess he's not under Tom Kim. He is, you can see here, uh, fairways gained. He is 16th in this field. He hits a ton of fairways. Si Wu hits a ton of fairways. If you want to build like the all Asian dude lineup, not a bad choice this week. I don't know if Morikawa technically fits in that because he's American uh, with an A from Asian descent. But if you just want to go with like all South Korean players, you might be doing pretty well because the accuracy does save them a ton. Uh, but with Tom Kim, he's fourth over the past 24 rounds from 10 to 15 feet. One of the worst from five to 10 feet. And that's the coin flip that we get ourselves into with Tom Kim. Where has he won? Well, the biggest crossover course that I talked about the first time he played it, the Wyndham Championship, the closest thing to these greens that you're going to find. How do you do? Well, he gained 12 and a half strokes on the greens. Huh. Interesting stuff. Where does he suck? You know, almost everywhere else, but not the Shriners, another place that has Bermuda greens. Uh, Bermuda and similar greens that we're going to see this week in Scottsdale. Putted really well on those. Terrible on the greens at the Sony. But he's someone who you're going to flip a coin on whether he putts well or not. If he putts well at a shorter course where he's not incentivized to really try to rip it like he was at Bay Hill. And like, that's a problem. If Rory can kind of not keep it off the gas a little bit, it's not so much about the driving distance, it's about the distance in general. When you get to a longer course with a lot of elevation like the Genesis or even Bay Hill, yeah, the lack of driving distance is going to hurt you, but that is then compounded by the fact that you're just having longer irons into a lot of these rings where the longer hitters are just using more loftier clubs, easier to control. It's pretty simple when you think about it. And Tom Kim is an excellent player from beyond 200 yards. See, let's check it out here. Proximity gain from beyond 200 yards, he's 10th in the field. But to do that over the course of four rounds, it's just inherently more difficult in my mind. I, I, you put a five iron in a guy's hand and eight iron in a guy's hand, the guy's going to be more accurate with an eight iron. Fewer shots are going to go off course. And when there's water all around, like there is at Bay Hill, you know, you hit one bad five iron, you might make a triple bogey. You're not going to have to hit a bunch of five irons at Sawgrass. You're going to have to hit a bunch of eight irons and down, which is where Tom Kim really does a lot of good work. He can, listen, as you can see, he does really well from beyond 200 yards as well, but just overall on approach, he's ninth in this field. So it's whether the putter can come for him this week. And I have confidence from what I've seen at similar style greens in terms of grass type and quickness that he's going to be handling these. Now, when he's like eight over because he's lost nine strokes putting through two rounds, feel free to come at me. Shit happens when you party naked. But this is where I want to go to. And right now he's 50 to one. I think he's going to be like 65 to one, 70 to one by the time this opens on Monday, because he, unless he does really well on Sunday at Bay Hill, but that doesn't seem like it's really in the cards for him at the moment. So those were the three players that I really wanted to get into from the lower end. Let's see who I started from down here. Probably have to start off Byun Hun and yeah, that's not so great. Aaron Rye, I find is very interesting. Obviously I was on him at Honda two weeks ago. He was a disaster, but that was mainly on the greens. He lost 4.1 strokes by Duke can't putt to save his life, but Hey, we're at the no putt place again. What's he going to do? He's going to hit. He's never played in the Players' Championship, so he's another debutant. But he's a very fair price coming into it, and he gains off the team in, and all of that are fairways. It's not distance to speak of. Hopefully, he can get his irons in play. 
One thing that does worry me a little bit, he's very good around the greens, but he actually seems to have his better stuff with his irons at longer courses throughout the course of his PGA career. Uh, we'll see Shriners a bit longer. Oh, that's kind of nice. Huh? RSM a bit shorter. Houston, very long. Genesis, very long. Nice Pete Dyke course. St. Jude, very long. Farmers, very long. So it's been a, a mix and match. He's just, he's not a great iron player. He can be in selected weeks, but he's someone that the approach is up and down. The putting can be up and down, but he's going to do those things. He's going to chip really well, and he's going to hit all the fairways. So even if he doesn't have his best stuff on approach, he can probably still get it up and down, which is great news. And he's $6,600. I'm just trying to find guys if I need to go scumming down to fill out the rest of my team. Bermuda, short course, boom, Adam Svensson. That one was easy. Bob Shelton was someone who shockingly ranked out really well for me. Tenth in approach in this field over the past 24 rounds. Tita Green, he's 24th. Doesn't hit a ton of fairways. That's not great. Not the best putter. We don't really care about that. But let's take a look at what he has done recently. Honda, 21st, short course. Pebble, 20th, short course. Weaker fields, mind you. That, that always has to be taken into account. Those are both shorter course events. Longer courses, make the cut, 67th. Not great, Bob. Hey, Pete Dye, American Express, 6th place. And on, on the approaches, 4, 2.2, 5.1, 3.5, 0.4, 3.7, around the green, he is picking it up. As long as he doesn't drive himself into the water, should be doing a little bit better. I don't mind him as potential sleepers. These aren't picks to win. These are guys that I am looking at from the very bottom. The three guys that I know that I'm betting going into the week are Tom Kim, Shane Lowry, and Siwoo. We'll see what happens with the rest of them. Uh, Davis Thompson has played pretty well. Eric Cole, I have faith that his short game is just going to come through for us. Fairways gain, that is a bit of a stretch. Uh, hopefully at a shorter course, he can do a little bit better. I like Spieth too. I'll see what Spieth's number is. Hopefully he blows up Sunday at API. And the Postmaster Generals has come second at Heritage Comp Course, won the Wyndham, and had two top 25s and three starts at this tournament before missing the cut last year but it's been a pretty good year for him dude has been struggling on the greens uh and he's not playing nearly as well as he was to open the year but he played phoenix and genesis against two really high-end fields he's not that class of player i know that those guys are here but getting him in a tournament like this where it is shorter and he can utilize his wedges a little bit more and utilize his accuracy like we saw at american express in the sony open or the rsm uh the Wyndham, fedex st jude another place with a ton of water around it all places where he's competed both against strong and weaker fields and still done very well now let's take a look at past 24 rounds and we'll keep the model loaded for a moment but click onto pete die only courses reload that model and see what we got going on in terms of the modeling on pete die tracks and we'll switch over to your regular and see what we got going on for this week all right pete die courses past 24 rounds we'll take an let's see who ranks out the best hovland actually ranks out the best if we're using the specific modeling uh, then it's lowry connors keegan huh all guys that play really well at this course interesting stuff doug gim is another one and he's only played eight rounds at this course so there's another what, what would that be 16 rounds at other pete Dye courses he has not been good mind you mr doug gim at all this season he has one made cut in the new year uh, and the last time he made a cut before that was at shriners so it's been a very bad go for the gim reaper lately i'm probably not going to play him but when you get there, it's going to be like, oh my God, he just destroys Pete Dye course. There's something about this. You, eventually, I'm playing Morikawa. I'll probably end up betting Morikawa because I'm a slut for Morikawa. Uh, and coming off a missed cut, we might get like a 30 on him, which would be very nice for the Players' Championship. But again, he's another you know, great wedge player, great long iron player, extremely accurate off the tee. All things we've seen. Another one where his putting can be super hot or super cold. And if you can catch him during one of the super hot weeks, uh, this shouldn't be a surprise to you. But every time that he has gained, I mean, look at minus 8.3. Minus 7.6. That's in the cards. That's the issue when you play Morikawa. But every time in his career that he's gained more than 3.2 strokes putting, he's never finished worse than second in an event. And that doesn't even include his other major championship at the Open Championship because there's no strokes gained from that event. So if you can just putt moderately well, you can see the driving, chipping. I mean, the chipping is always up and down with him. He can get the yips, but he's also can chip really, really well, as we've seen in the past too. Uh, so that's kind of hit or miss for me of where it goes. Although it does seem like he chips. I think this Zozo was the one they played at Shearwood 
Or was that the one at Shadow Creek? Now I can't remember. He does a lot of his best chipping in LA. So like at for the US Open, just bet Rom, Homa, and Morikawa and be on your way. Maybe Cantway too. Probably too much in terms of the top of the board with all this stuff. So who else does well? Streelman, Kirk, Siwoo, Sungjae. There's Cantley. There's Henley. What the hell has Henley been up to? I think he gagged the cut line at API. Nothing. He, he won Mayakoba and he's really done shit since interesting he's been pretty bad so well probably a good play at the players this week if you come in with terrible form then all of a sudden you're probably good to go web all right i'm gonna click off the modeling and just go back to regular strokes gained per round to try to see more of the field because not a lot of the field has a lot of experience at pete dies a lot of them this is the only peak die course that they play over the course of the year um, but just to take a look at overall strokes gain total uh so there we are again. Mr. You, number one. That's in one round. Taylor Montgomery and Ben Griffin both have two rounds. So they're the top three in strokes gain total. Then it's Lowry, Connor, Sungjae, Zhao, Adam Scott, John Rahm, Thomas. Who are some like names that we can get in here? Fitz, Scheffler, Webb, Keegs, Finau. Finau I'm going to add to the list as well. Fleetwood. Fleetwood's played really well at this tournament in the course of his career. Cooch. Cooch is interesting. Cooch has won this tournament, obviously before i really let us down at the honda classic but it had been playing some very i guess he played really good golf at both sony and the genesis how has he fared at the players in general nah, hasn't really been good since he came third in 2016 won it in 2012 not really great off the tee although it seems like he had been hitting more fairways he's only lost he lost at pebble in one round and that was in bad conditions that was the first time he had lost off the tee since last year's playoffs so maybe if he can keep it dry get one of those hot rounds putting going and just cobble together some irons be not as good as he was at genesis maybe more like at sony like one and a half two maybe he can come through for us eh, we'll see about that hadwin i think is most definitely a look chuck him on the list canadians you know they love florida We've seen it. Not a great Genesis. Still made the cut. That Most of that damage was on the weekend. We've been playing some very good golf before that. Uh, I believe he came inside the top 10 last year. Yeah, he was 9th, 29th before that. Has won in Florida in his career. And you usually try to get on Adam Hadwin when the irons are going a little bit better. Again, another player who does well on Bermuda. Absolutely. I mean, he's a good putter in general. Uh, you can see he just gains strokes across the board. But just plays well at shorter courses. He does do better in calm conditions, not the greatest win player, but he was able to power through it last year just by making a ton of putts and hitting his irons really well. So that's what we're looking at, Pete Dye-wise. We're the worst guys. All the guys you'd expect, really. Ben Ann. Ben Ann actually surprised me. Bob Shelton and Aaron Rye in nine rounds and 16 rounds. Maybe I'll have to rethink that one a little bit. Anyone good, I guess we're looking at. Davis Thompson. It's only four rounds. I'm not too concerned about that. It's all the $6,000 dudes. Min Woo, zeros. Ryan Fox, zeros. Fox came through for me this week. Min Woo did not. That was a bad run for old Min Woo. He made so he made like seven birdies in round one and shot plus two or plus three. It was kind of crazy to think about. Then everyone else is actually just pretty good at Pete Dye courses. Dietrich actually has some of my interest this week. Uh, has not really gained on fairways. Let's try to take a look at some of the best players that maybe you don't think are great players who hit the fairway. Uh, and see if anything pops out for us in that. Actually, we're just back on strokes gained because I flipped back over to that. My bad on that one. So let's take a look at fairways gained. Fairways and greens. Greens and regulation and fairways gained, obviously, are two things that you really want to wait. I mean, greens and regulation every single time. Rom the best. Sheffler. Alex Smalley. Okay. Let's shrink this down to past 12 rounds and try to take a look at just greens and regulation. I just want to run something through to see if any new names can pop up. List Rom, Shoffley, Sheffield, Yagabombs, Bramlett, Hickok. Okay, Hickok's interesting. Let's get to him for a second. Dude sucks, kind of across the board. Very good in windy conditions. Played really well at the Honda in his career. Coming off two pretty good runs in a row. You can see Honda, three finishes inside the top 30. And we're not looking for a win from Kramer Hickok, although he did lose in a playoff at River Highlands to Harris English at a Pete Dye course. That's interesting to see. Has made the cut both times he's played the players. Um, never really any good finish, but we're just trying to get guys through the cut line. Does gain around the greens a ton, generally gains off the tee, and it's hit and miss with the putter with him. And you can see he gained a ton one year at the players. He lost last year. Generally speaking, he's a bad putter, but the rest of his game seems to be pretty in tune over his last five, his last 10, and even over his last 20 starts, he's actually been pretty good. And what the hell is his price? 6000 He is the min 
this week. Good game drives, hits a bunch of fairways. He just doesn't get himself into a ton of trouble. He's not good by any means, but doesn't get himself into much trouble, which can really go a long way at this course. So I want to back this up past 36 rounds now to take a deeper look into fairways gained, only because, you know, just a longer sample who can hit fairways a ton. Henley, Morikawa, Rye. Oh my God, Jerry Kelly's in this field. Damon's been bad since he's come back. Todd, Long, Buckley. Okay. What's uh, Hayden Buckley loves to fuck? Let's get him up there. Siwoo, shocker. Reevy, just like, I would say there's a limit to guys who can't putt that you want to go to. Like, Reevy just legit can't putt. Justin S, put him on the list. Tiddly Dunks, maybe. Day. I can't believe Day is up there for someone who's got a lot of his distance back. Day might be the highest. He or Ricky are probably going to be the highest owned guys on this slate on DraftKings. So keep that in mind. CT Pants, another player who's not playing. He again hurt his wrist. I don't believe that he is going to be coming back. Shocker, Keith Mitchell was up there. Very interesting stuff. Who's been the worst at hitting fairways? Fox, Mullenix. These are probably guys that you want to stay away from. Spieth can kind of piece it together, I suppose. Ugh, I do like Spieth this week, but that's more of a gut feeling than anything else. I don't think the numbers are going to love him when we take a look at it. Final thing I want to do, talk about those short courses. We'll go less than 7,200 yards, and we'll do the rotation of courses that I consider to be correlations. We're not doing guess the odds this week, so we can go into it a little bit longer. So less than 7,200 yards, past 24 rounds, all courses, and we're going to take an average. And I don't want to look at driving distance. I want to look at strokes gained. And you can probably take a look at driving distance versus you can probably put a baseline. You can always use a thing called the mixed condition model that if you did want to do this, and there's a walkthrough here about how to use the mixed condition model. I haven't added anything to it yet. What you do is add a column right here in your mixed condition model. And you can say um, last 24 under 7,200 yards, T to green. And then you'd go over here and select and you get that specific weighting for your mixed condition model. So it's a lot like the model that I ran earlier. You can even add your model into the mixed condition model and weight it within the other ones. But if you did want to take a look at some guys that you perceive to be bombers, for example, like take Rory McIlroy. You can go back to driving to driving accuracy on courses of less than 7,200 yards and then courses of, you know, all courses in general, and then take a look at the difference between his accuracy levels. Does it vastly improve once you get to shorter courses? I don't know. It's something you can do. FantasyNational.com slash Bayo. Do it yourself, all right? Hovland is the best. We're not on Pete Dye anymore, right? No. Nope. On short courses in general, it is. Victor Hovland. Can't lay. Taylor, Montgomery, Flea Market, Xander, Rom, Thomas, Seamus, Power, $7,400. There's Henley again pumping himself up. Max Homa, Chris Kirk, Dietrich once again. Eric Cole has played these short courses really, really well. Cam Young. I don't love Cam Young this week, but it, he just kind of lights me up every single time that I don't play him. Lowry, Harmon, Poston. Uh, Lowry, Harmon, and Poston, and Hideki, for that matter. Uh, four guys who've had some good run at this tournament. There's Tom Kim. That's only in 17 rounds. That's pretty good. Si Wu, there's a winner. Another guy who plays this really well. Corey Connors, Adam Hadwin. Maybe I have to throw Brandon Woo onto this list. See how it goes. Colin Morikawa, Sungjae, Spieth, Mad McNeely. Still too pricey. Don't like it. Pendrith is another one who weirdly plays shorter court For being a bomber, plays shorter courses a lot better than longer courses which is strange. So we'll throw him on the tentative list. Too. I have 23 guys start. That'll get up to 50 by the time I cut it back down to 24 and we start making our lineups. TD Green-wise, uh, Corey Connors is the best, but obviously he can't putt, so that's a problem. Uh, ditto with Luke List, another guy who gains tons T to Green on shorter courses, just can't make any putts. No one of note really jumps up. Sam Burns jumps up a little bit more when we just start looking at T to Green, but I do want to do the correlation courses before I end the show and the ones that I talked about. Uh, and we're going to keep the Players' Championship off of this. So if you hold Command on your keyboard, you can click on it. I think Colonial is one of the ones that goes into this. Harbor Town for the Heritage is one that is a crossover for this as well. What else do we want to go into? Do we want to use PGA National? I feel like no, because the stats are too wonky with all the water. That's why I don't want to use the players. I want to get Sedgefield into this mix. And I want to get TPC. Where are we at here? What's the TPC one called for the <laughs> MX? It's not TPC. Oh, white. What the hell is it called? My mind is going on me. Uh, the stadium course. Is it called? That's right. 
Stadium course, TPC. Fuck me. Complete. There it is, stadium course. And Sea Island. Yeah, you could probably use RSM, but I really want to get Sedgefield. Where Where is Sedgefield? Sedgefield CC. So I think that's all of them. No, you know what? Wiley is the other one that I wanted to throw on. So just a mix of those five courses. The Pete Dye and Friends Slam, Colonial, Harbortown, Sedgefield, Stadium Course, Wiley. Those five. And try to see what we can get out of that. Now take our average, average strokes gain total. Can't lay. There's Ben Griffin. I'm playing Ben Griffin. Fuck it. Let's go with him. Uh, he just keeps popping up in everything we do, including leaderboards. He continues to pop up. Um, couldn't pick him out of a lineup of one. No idea what he looks like. Well, now I do. He looks like every other golfer ever. Big shocker. Uh, bat on Poa, putts well on Bermuda. Well, that's good news. Gains in all types of difficulty. Bad in the win, but it's a very small sample for a guy who's barely been on tour. Jesus, he's gained strokes all the way back to the very first tournament of the new season at the Fortnite Championship. He's gained strokes on approach ever since. Gaining off the tee. Gaining around the green. The putter can go up and down. We've seen some spike weeks. These are good results. 7100 bucks. Let's fucking go, Ben Griffin. Get on the team, pal. Okay, so there we go. And I can probably take off the... Let's, let's click off the less than 72 in case one of these br breaches over for certain rounds and see if that changes anything. I doubt it will. But, yeah, now Ben Griffin's number one now. Fantastic news. Ben Griffin, Montgomery, Tiger, Henley, Finau. A lot of the same names. There's Tom Kim and Cantley. Connors and Raman Cooch. Okay, so now Cooch is up there as well. Sam Burns. I don't know if I can trust Sam Burns after what I've seen the past two weeks, but yeah, I'm a sucker. I'll probably go back to him anyway. Siwoo and Hadwin, Scheffler, Hatton. We got Chris Kirk again. I mean, these are the types of guys that I just really want to gravitate towards. Lowry and Jason Day. Smalley, I don't know. I, I really don't know what to do about Alex Smalley. He's up and down. He doesn't seem like he's had his best stuff so far this season. How'd he fare at the players last year? Didn't even play. How good was he? Wasn't invited into the field. He'll go on to the tentative shortlist for me. <sighs> Zalatoris, yeah, people are going to be so bummed about him after this week that, you know, I'll, I'll go down with that ship again. Hayden Buckley, I said I was going to look into a little bit more, although he's a, he's a higher rated than Rory on ones like this. Let's see, where has he done his best play? Sony Open, okay. Zozo made the cut at the, he's been bad on the greens though. Had a blow up round, round two at the Honda did not go well for him. He does hit a ton of fairways. Off the tee, he's going to be solid every single week. I wish it meant more here, but that's the top five and top ten that we looked at in terms of where it is meaningful, how meaningful it is. At whatever the hell price Hayden Buck, I don't know, how much is Hayden Buck? Wait, 6900 Nah. There were guys that I liked more. I mean, I like Ben Griffin way more for $200 more. I probably like Eric Cole more at 6300 So maybe he just ends up in a dead zone for me. However, that is the walkthrough for the Players' Championship using FantasyNational.com. Maybe I don't have the best picks, but maybe I jarred something, sparked something in your mind that you need to go research or a fact that you want to go play someone that you saw or I talked about. And I didn't even realize that I brought it up, but I really recommend that you do go to FantasyNational.com slash mail to get your 20% off and do all this research yourself. As you can see, I can do an entire show of this because this is actually how I do my research for the tournaments. When I do my walkthroughs, you're going to have your own entire process as well, but we have it all in one place for you to generate your lineups, the ownership projections, everything you need is on fantasynational.com join the listeners league that's down in the description sub to the newsletter that's completely free to get in the draw for 500 dollars of cold hard cash you can get even more ballots the most ballots ever many people are saying the best way to get into the draw for 500 dollars is to subscribe rate and review five stars the pat mayo experience audio podcast on apple or spotify okay Thank you all for watching. Check out the shows from Friday and the rest of the week in Cut Sweat Live on Friday on Mayo Media Network. So please sub to the YouTube channel and hang out with us as we have a conniption fit about our guys missing the cut in the worst possible ways. Because you know what's going to happen, right? I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. Experience! Experience!